Receipts of mailing for people who get certified mail? No, I don't. You do mail them out with certified yeah, and you have them question. somewhere in your records, is that correct? No, I made a mistake in putting them out. Huh? And I made a mistake in putting receipts out a couple months ago. Really? You might want to go talk to Kevin and see if Kevin Cherry, who's the postmaster, and see if he can produce copies. Because we now have no proof that we notify the homeowner that we are, they are in danger of having the water shut off. Okay. Do you happen to remember off the top of your head which accounts by account number were sent out? Which ones? No, honestly. You have copies of the letters you sent out, though? Those are saved in the computer, yes. You need to print them out, because we're going to, we've got to print them out. Mm -hmm. I'll pick them up tomorrow morning. Okay. okay. Do you have a list of delinquencies, current delinquencies? Yes, also right there. I hate to say it, but it sounds like the same people, and not much has changed. Has anyone actually been shut off? Uh, not in a while, though. Pardon? Not in a while, though. Okay. Well, we're going to have to deal with that. Um... Pending orders, there were none. DES guests spoke. We went into non public session to review the audit. And we've already dealt with the issue of the overspending. Okay. Are there any new invoices? or purchase orders or checks that need to be covered? Yes. I guess I did that out of order, didn't I? Okay. For the uh, St. Mary's Church, the delinquent, because the post office box that sent an email to us going to get involved. Mm -hmm. The, nobody's been able to pick up the mail down here in Wallsford. I don't buy the office. Oh, it's going to the wrong spot? You'll be seeing a change request coming in for an address change. Okay. So you know where they're at. So oh. I have a list of what the bills they pay and where they're at from their accounts. Okay. You want to go through it? Sure. And, uh, I was going to match this up. I was 13th one. 
this way.
So the town doesn't have to pay for it. Crash. Small stuff.
Could you photocopy and could you photocopy? Could you photocopy and scan these and send this to the commissioner's uh, the commissioner email box, please, so that we have copies of them? Thank you. All right. Copies of the sign. Yes, the sign books. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry, there's two more pending PO requests. And it was the, the request for the consumers. That is on hold. Okay. Pending. Pending what, Clint? Pending
million dollars worth of assessment because it's just the property that's served by the district. Not the entire town, just the part served by the district. This is called the MS1 calculation. Okay? It's $108 million. All right? So we now know that's the law. That means, come on, did it no, down? We can borrow a maximum, we can get debt of $1,087,000 plus a few hundred. And that's it. We can't go any further than that without a very special authorization, which is very hard to get. Okay? What do we have for current debt? Your capacity to borrow is that number, a million eighty-seven thousand, less the debt you already have. It's just like a credit card. So if your credit card is a million bucks and you've already charged up actually seven hundred seventy-nine thousand, that's all you've got. All right? We have three debt functions. We have a water tower bond for $221,000, which retires in 2023. We have a sewer bond, which retires in 2033. And we have the Porter Well Note, which great, it retires in 2020. Okay? That's our debt. That's fixed. You can't refund. Uh, bonds and notes like this. You can't prepay them. You can't refinance them. You're stuck with them. So, if we look at our indebtedness limit of a million eighty-seven, and we take out the current debt, all we've got is $307,000. That's all we can borrow. That's the max. Legally. Right? Now, there's a discussion here about Willie Street. Uh, can I ask a question before you proceed? You're yeah. referencing this $1.08 million of potential indebtedness based on 1% of the valuation of the properties in the district, is that yeah. right? Correct. The town is, is like $280 value? million. What? I'm sorry. The town is like $280 million. But the district is a proper subset. I understand. What is what are you finding to be the assessed value of the properties in the water sewer district? There's one hundred eight million dollars. So that's not one percent of the valuation. That is the no, valuation. No, itself. that's the valuation of the property. You may then become indebted up to one percent of that figure. Okay. Thank you. The town can do three percent of two hundred eighty million if they are so inclined, which I hope they aren't. This is Willie Street, and this is from Wright Pierce. And what they're suggesting is replace all the water line along Willie Street. They're suggesting it would cost between two hundred and ten and three hundred thousand dollars. Remember that magic figure: a limit of three hundred seven thousand. Sit to That's it. That's all we got. Now, what I said was, all right, let's borrow it. Now, we can go to private banks, actually we have a relationship with Northway Bank, where we probably could get what is called a simple interest loan, like the standard consumer loan. You pay a little bit of interest and a lot of principal at first, and then it switches over to the end where you're paying all the principal and it's gone. I said, all right, water lines have a long life, supposedly. So I said, all right, what if we borrowed for 20 years at 3.75%, which is about what we're getting these days in these types of tax-benefited loans, and we make quarterly payments, like the one we have now with Northway Bank. Well, that would come to about 4455 per quarter. Okay? Not terribly onerous because the impact would be $7.95 per household per 
per quarter, eight bucks. Doable, right? I would think. But then we have the problem of we've only got $59,000 left in borrowing capacity. Anybody hear about PFOA and PFOS and all that stuff? We don't know what that's going to cause. We don't know. We just don't know. What if there's something unforeseen that happens and we need to borrow? That's all that's left on our credit card. $59,000. You told us, though, with a pro with the proper, um, through the proper channels, we could borrow more if needed. No, we right? can't. No, you said that when you said, you it's said. It's very you exceptional situation. But you said that we could. If, uh, if this, if, you know. Okay, don't hang your hat on it. It's things like a meteorite strike, a terrorist attack will do it. Or maybe something that would come up like this. We don't know no, yet. No, this, really. this doesn't qualify. No, the, the stuff that we don't know about yet, that could it, qualify. It has to be a major crisis to qualify for that. Okay, but it could. I wouldn't as much that. as it couldn't, it could. There's always a chance that we'll win the megabucks, too. But, okay, you know, as long as you plan. We have, we have to plan. <laughs> Base our planning on what is most likely to happen. And then try to factor in what could happen. It's reasonable. Okay? That being said, we have another choice. Not one I favor, but here it is. We pay for it all in one year. Then we wouldn't have to borrow. However, that would mean we take 250,000 divided by approximately 560 customers. Each person would pay 446.42 per year, or 111 dollars and 60 cents per quarter. Problem would be fixed. We wouldn't have to worry about running up the limit on our debt. But I don't think that's a very practical solution. Are there no. only 560 customers in our water district? Yeah, approximately. That's uh, less plus. Well, it doesn't matter. That the point is. It's a lot of money for one quarter. It, it's not households. It's meters. How many meters do you have? Still more than 560. Okay. 570? 600, at least. Um, okay, well, it's still not going to make much difference in that bottom number. It doesn't sure. bump me on what you think are regular rates, right? Yes. I don't consider this to be a viable option. But I present it to you as an idea. Okay? Probably a bad idea, but it's there. Now, Wright Pierce proposed a 10 year capital investment plan. This bottom figure 1.455 million dollars. Some of you have seen this, some of you haven't. But I'll pass it. Oh, do I? Uh, you want your pretty color one back? Because no, that's a good paper. It's the one that made it through the color laser printer before. He said, forget that. Yeah. Right. They want, they project, this is their best estimate, $1.455 million. Now, I've already explained, we can only do a little over a million, so I don't know how we can possibly do this. None of these things constitute a meteorite strike, a terrorist attack. Earthquakes are kind of uncommon. But nothing would get us into that range of money that I know of. Okay? Did it say terrorist attack, meteor, meteor strike? Did it, did it label it's, those things? It said extraordinary and unforeseen not acts of God. An act of God is like a tornado. Okay? If we suddenly all the pipes in the district froze, that would be covered by our insurance. But yes. But this includes the Willie Streets. This it Street includes it, yes. It's sort of like how do you eat an elephant? One tablespoon at a time? Well I'm saying 
let's attack the problem first at Willie Street, and then this, which I don't know how we would ever be able to finance that, we'll have to set aside. Because that's our job, is to be realistic. Okay? Now, if we could get an exception, we would go to the next. We go to the bond bank. They're our buddies. They're very nice people, by the way. Very helpful. Nice. If we financed $1.455 million over 20 years, it might be 25, but it certainly won't be less than 20. This is what they project the debt schedule would be. Right. Now that's if we somehow finance one point for five five million dollars. Yes, Dennis. From uh, Dennis Water Street. Who are you? Are you considering large rate increases? Pardon? Large rate increases. Let me get for you. Let me get for that. Do right. you remember the Willie Street project where I said we'll do it in one year? Mm -hmm. Yes. That is a large. A temporary. Temporary. For one year. year. Well, it's for one year, but it's a hell of a bite for one year. Right. $30 a month. But it's a month. temporary. It's well, as somebody at DES once told me, you people have to reorder your priorities. Your cable bill and your cell phone are not as important as clean water and processing wastewater. That was their opinion. Do you disagree? I do indeed. Because when you talk about putting a burden on people of $111 per month, you must add what is the other per quarter. Per quarter. Per quarter. Per quarter. You must add in the other tax burden of the town, which is property tax. It all really goes together. So you have to think about this belongs along with property tax. And if you think rents are high now, if you're a renter, they're going to go way up. <clears throat> think about that. But anyway, so we managed somehow to get $1.455 million bonded to borrow, in addition to what we have now. Okay? What does that mean? I always use 516, I'm sorry if that's wrong, but it works. I went for the second year payment. If you look at the schedule, you see it tells you the calendar year total payment all the way down. It does decline eventually, like after 10 years, but it's still there. It will be two hundred and twenty-three dollars and eighty-two cents for five hundred and sixty customers, or fifty-six dollars a quarter, in addition to what you're paying now. Okay? There's no point in doing that one, you know, the right pairs proposal piecemeal because you can. You've got to do it all at once because there's no other way to, you know, stop the payment. All right? Fifty-six dollars a quarter. Come on, talk to me. All right, that's the end of my presentation. Does anybody have any alternatives, other ideas, or practical solutions? Yes, your name, please. I'm Brock. I live on South Street, 43 South Street. <clears throat> I'm wondering if uh, can you structure the debt repayments to um, be small initially, and then in 2020. Three when two hundred grand comes off to increase, can, can you do that kind of thing? You're talking about creative financing and structuring a debt so that it's small to begin with and then climbs uh, to fill in when the other debt expires. Right, bond bank won't do that. USDA won't do that. Most banks won't do that. But we could look. At, I doubt we'll find anybody who's. You usually what you end up with is a higher interest rate because of that because they want their money, and they want their income stream. Yes? How, 
How long would it take to implement all those projects? I'm just trying to think of the offset when you'd actually incur that debt. Well, are you talking about just Willie Street, or are you talking about all of it? All of it, because you're, you're kind of using that as kind of an example here. So the 1.455 million, um, how long would it take to do all of that? Is that a year to fully uh, I, I have finish been, all I've, of that? I've talked to the engineers. It, probably, it could take at least a full year to do everything. But it's true that the, the debt wouldn't be incurred until the project's completed. Is that correct? As soon as you sign the note, the clock starts ticking. I'll show you. Oh. Yeah. See this? That's the first partial year payment. No, I think you're you're missing. The question is, when do you when do you have to start making payments? Don't you? Isn't it like a it starts accruing? Bond? Starts accruing the minute you sign the bond. So in six months you have a payment. I guess you said you're not done. If that's so, that's that that's a, that would be at the beginning of the project, not necessarily at the end of the project. I'm sorry. I guess what, what he's saying is, is it does it start at the beginning of the project or the end of the project? The interest starts accruing the day you sign the bond note. That's why there's that twenty-seven thousand there. That's the first partial. What about um, a, a different option would be, you know, working with the other capital improvement projects within the town. So if there's a repaving that has to happen, trying to kind of leverage some of that, some we, of those budgets. We are a separate municipality. We can no more commingle our efforts than we can with Dover or South Berwyn. We have to be discreet. Uh, excuse sure, that we can cooperate uh, and plan the road plan. You the know, planning part of the payment <laughs> part has got to be discreet. The payment part is, but you can certainly work with the town of Rollinsburg. I, I didn't say we wouldn't work with them. I said we can't commingle the funds. Well, no, you didn't say funds. All right, the well, project. Yeah, no. Yeah, so, so that would be an option? I'm sorry? That would be an option to try to leverage no. some other projects within the town? For example, for example, if we dig up Willie Street, we have to coordinate with the town about the repaving part. Okay, that's the coordination. We're going to have to pay for the repaving, but the town has planned sometime in the future to redo that street. So we would coordinate with them about repaving. But they wouldn't pay us to repay because it's our responsibility to grow the tar. Well, my question is, couldn't you time your project with with a street that's scheduled for repaving? Like Anybody Pine Street? From Willie Street? Yes. <laughs> Do you know when your street's going to get redone? I don't know, but isn't there a, like a, some sort of capital improvements? There's a select person you can ask her. Okay. I, I mean, what if it's in four years? Do you want to wait four years? No, but I, I'm just proposing that as an option. You asked for alternatives. I well, I asked for, excuse me. Alternatives, other ideas, and practical solutions. Practical solutions. That is, that if they're not going, going to pay that street, street, if they're not going to pay that street, say in four years, do we wait and not do the pipe for four years? Oh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, certain ones we will have to pay for, but right. just in the sense of first step in planning, what does the list look like of when the different streets need to be? We, we, we don't know that, but the slide is done. But lists can be modified based on need as well. I mean, we can, we can move things around based on what other projects might be happening within the town. Bottom line is, if there's going to be stuff that's happening and it's going to affect the town's budget or town select men to have a say in it, there's no consultation. I mean, they need to work with us as we do that. Okay. Oh, Angela, I've been waiting for you this week. I'm so glad about that, Vern. I've been waiting for my turn. Uh, Angela Matthews, 437 Locust Street. So I have two questions. And one is my recollection of when DES was here and the presentation they did, they assured us that USDA would be interested in talking with us because of the way in which we are hampered by affordability. So I'm not asking you to respond to that because I'm sure you have your own assumptions and they're not necessarily accurate in the sense that we've not had that conversation. So I would encourage us to take those steps forward and see what USDA would be open to in terms of 
a, an inquiry from us and helping with uh, a, a, the debt structure that we're carrying and help us through that because these problems are not going to go away. They're just going to get worse. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. My don't, second question for you is about the fund the first balance. Can I have the first sure. point? Sure. We've already had the conversation with the USDA. That until you can demonstrate that you have an income impact, you've got to demonstrate it first. They have to treat us like everybody else. Absolutely. Okay? And I think we probably can demonstrate. We've got, we've got some good... Um, data to show the position that we're in and the needs that we have. So if they're willing to have a conversation with us, I would love to see if we can bring them to a meeting and hear from USDA about what they may or may not be able to do. And it may be a dead end, but at least it's pursued. And so my second question for you is about the fund balance. And this is for uh, our town managers here and also for the select board member. Denise, thank you for being here. And, uh, so my question is about the way in which the fund balance can be factored into a part of this, you know, as part of the solution. You know, the emergency need to get something done on Willie Street can perhaps be funded by some of that balance, which is for capital, I'm sure, some of it is for having issues like this that arise. So, so that's my question. And I welcome well, the response. Well, the answer is I'd, I'd rather have Tom do me explain it. I'm sorry? I'd rather have Tom Dume, the auditor, explain it. Because if I told you you can't do that, you won't believe me. So I'll let Tom Dume explain it. I'm, I'm curious. You can't could use he that. come to the next okay. meeting? To, huh? Could he be asked to come to the next meeting to explain? I, I, I think what I'm going to look for is someone who knows municipal accounting because he's an auditor and we need somebody who does municipal accounting. Okay. The woman over in the back has been asking for five minutes. She's had her very corners. Oh, that's, I was just, I did, was curious about the difference between, we could, with a bond, we can borrow more money than just, you can borrow you know, more money. The one, how can you even see the limit that with the bond, you're no. talking about one and a, so you're talking about a lot more money than. Well, I was using that to demonstrate First, we would exceed our debt limit. Okay, that was the illustration point. And two, what its impact would be on ratepayers. I, so I, it's not possible to, to do the bond. Yes, it is possible, but there's none of the factors in that study are sufficient. It's there. There are towns in like Texas and down south. Water lines and water processing system is so bad that you really can't drink the water. They violate the federal standards all over the place. They would get an, a, a pass on this. That would be an exception for them. But that's down south and in Texas. Thank you, Vern. Also, the figures that the right Pierce gave us do not include engineering work to go along with that as well. Yes. Oh, they're, they're going to be able to cost, you know, so the additional cost tied on top of this as well. Okay. Yes? Which one? The or Dennis? Come on. Pick one. Let her go. <laughs> 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 can we take out the... We have to do Willie Street. I mean, that's obvious. Um, if we take out that bond for, what was it, 300000 250000 Yeah. Well, it's a loan. It's, it's a debt. It's a loan. It's a debt. But if we can do that, if it fits within it, in 2020, one of the um, Port of Well bond will be paid, which yes. is next year. Yes. And then three years from that, the other um, water bond will be paid. Yes. So then we can pay it off faster. We can put that money towards it. Okay. I've tried to explain this before. Yeah. If you have a simple interest loan from the bank, <clears throat> you can accelerate your payments. Okay. Bonds. You cannot accelerate payment. You cannot prepay. It's not allowed. It's a bond. Okay. Can, can we take a loan then instead of a bond and prepay? The 250 what? wouldn't be a bond. I'm trying to hear what she's saying. What? I, instead of making a bond, can it be a loan? So that's, you can't prepay. That's what we would investigate. Right. Whoever gets us the best deal is the way we're going. Right. Yes, Caroline. I, I've seen you before. Where is he? Go ahead. The town's bond can be prepaid. It's no, it's a loan. 
Yes, but it can be. But it's not a bond. It is a bond, which is a form of a loan, which can be repaid early, if if the town so desires to do so. Secondly, to Mrs. Matthews' point about the fund balance, you have an undesignated fund balance of over three hundred thousand dollars for the commissioner's conversation with the auditor last fall, who advised the commissioners at that time to do the warrant articles that were present on the March ballot, which were approved, those capital improvement items, one of which was to take $50,000 from that undesignated fund balance, which would still leave it within what the auditor considered a healthy range for cash flow purposes. Right. I'm just speaking to her point because she asked the question. You can't dip it any deeper. You can Especially use the $50,000 you were authorized by the voters to use, is my point. For the purpose authorized. You can't use it anywhere else. Agreed. So why not do that project? Because we're, I'm not, that's another issue for another day. We, 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 other people are, yes, Dennis. Uh, a question. Uh, Prospect Street, Mechanic Street, Bunker Street. Does anybody have problems on those streets with their lot of rust? Has anybody said anything? I mean, I mean, we're just talking Willie Street, but that's all cast iron pipe, isn't it? Yes, all the locusts, prospect. Yeah, all that. So why is everything localized on Willie Street? There must be other problems. Is everybody happy? <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, why don't why don't we just give everything to the town and let them have it? Oh, <laughs> the town. Okay, it's no, no, not that scowling. Glen Eno Foundry Street. Is the water safe, Burn? Yes, it is. Both DES and the professor from UNH will said it's safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would you drink it, Burn? I drink it every day. So yellow water? like on Willie Street? Pardon? Yellow what? like on Willie Street? Street? Willie Street water you drink? Actually, I put in the filter that someone on Willie Street put in. And my to appearances appears clear. After two weeks, the thing was clogged solid. <coughs> so it's in everybody's water. Don't be fooled. It's just a question of volume diluting it. That's all. <coughs> but it's all there. It's not. It might be safe. But it's not acceptable. It could be safe, but but for a paying customer for right there, I mean, it's not acceptable. For I mean, we've all seen the pictures and stuff like that. You need right. a solution. Right. You need a solution. Right. 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 Yeah, I'm not arguing. Sure, that. it's not you know Flynn. Go ahead, Tamara. I'm appreciating okay. that you're allowing people to ask you questions tonight, Vern. So thank you for that. Um, my question is: You've been the chair of the Water District Commission Board since March. Yes. And you still don't know how many ratepayers there are in the Water District. According. How to is this math of any use to anyone if you don't even know the number of people over which you are dividing the expense of all of these projects? I, I can't understand how you wouldn't know that. I have to do the work based on the information I have, and sometimes the information I get is fragmentary. Did the people before you know how many rate there were? I doubt it. How long have we not known how many rate pairs there were in the How many rate pairs did we have? We have 535. 535! Why is number. someone else saying that we have over 600 rate pairs? I've been gone for a year and a half. Well, I'm just, well, I'm just, I'm really, I, I I'm really confused. Clearly there's some confusion. We'll find out. Can you explain it? Would you allow Ray to explain it? No. I'm not getting into an extended discussion about how many people do we supply water. That's not as important as it's super how do we important. handle that. If you're going to do math around numbers that we're all going to be Thank on the hook for, for we should population. know who we're yes. dividing it over. I just, you know, I think we're going to have to raise rates. I mean, I don't know about you. I don't, I'm going to fix income. I'm retired. I don't want to pay higher prices for things, but I pay more for gas, I pay more for insurance, I pay more for health insurance, I pay more for my phone and for my internet and all that. And I mean, I think we're going to have to raise rates. I, I'm not disputing you know, that. I don't, I'm not disputing every, that. Everybody else I get services from raises their rates. My doctor, my pharmacist, you know, my grocery store. And I gave you two you know? scenarios. Yeah. One that was $56 a quarter and one that was $8 a quarter. We're looking for solutions that are effective and affordable. 
okay? Mm -hmm. We know the rates are going to go up. It's part of inflation. They have to. Yeah. And if we have a crash, we're really in trouble. Brian. Yeah, Brian Boren, One Front Street. Uh, the number of rate payers is different from the number of meters, is different from the number of accounts. And so I, I've got to come to Vern's defense there. I've done a deep dive into the numbers, and it's surprisingly hard to figure out exactly what you're dividing this across. You know, do you just divide by the number of bills that go out, in which case uh, I, every hydrant will get part of this cost? Uh, do you divide it by the number of people? Do you divide it by the number of uh, build units? It's, weirdly, it's not an easy answer. Adam, quick, before somebody jumps in. Yeah, okay. So I was just going to tell you, I've, I've been exploring um, some, some softwares to use. It's free. Free software put out by the state. And um, it's, uh, it's, what is it? The Environmental Finance Institute, they have a um, program where you can put all of your expenses in. You're talking about the North Carolina thing. Yes, it's free. Yes. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. I'm not impressed. Why not? It was free. It's I worked for the state. It, it was it's free. Crazy. It was funded by grant money. Yeah. Uh, but so, no, it's free. I, free I, was, I was free online, was. I was on the TES website today, and they put the program on the website, so we can all play with the numbers too, and I've been playing with them, and you can experiment with how much money you would need to raise the rates by to keep the fund balance from depleting. Right. I'm just telling you that there, there are, or I guess I'm also offering my service, I'm telling you that it's out there, there's there's free stuff, and maybe at the next the next meeting, you or I or somebody could... Why don't you do this? Do you have our annual present budget? More option? Yes. Yes. Do you have our annual Yes. Do you have a copy of the I just want the one that I want finance report. Oh, I don't have this on the side. Would you do the link to budget? If you take the finance report, it has the total budget yeah. okay, in various categories. And so you can preload that in what you want to do. It was kind of and, um, and have we ever thought of applying for a DES SRF loan, a low interest loan, like 3%, I think? I'm quoting 3.75. The basis point is different. I mean, oops. Yeah, it's not going to be Yeah, have you looked into it? In the past, we have. Okay. So why have we. Okay. So why would you pay more if there's another option? Is what it's asking. We would obviously negotiate with our banks. Remember, bonds and notes and loans from the municipalities are tax free. So we have leverage on that one. We can, they, would, they actually pay a premium for the muni bond banks. They pay a premium as mine. But we do. are so attractive. So. We do a 3% over a 3.7%. You said we take the best offer, obviously. Because I would do that on a car loan, house yes, loan, we will, anything. We'll go for one that isn't only <coughs> in terms of like, if there was a bond with no repayment capacity and for, say, 3%, and we had a loan for 3.5, did give us the opportunity to refinance or repay, we would take that. Because in five years, we may come into an opportunity that's even better, so we would take that. Pay off the loan. Exactly. Just like you would with a car loan. You would refinance the car loan. We'll do the same thing. Which is why we're sort of biased towards yeah. standard similar to homes. Yes? I think Bob had his hand up before me. Just, it uh, seems like everybody's a little, everybody wants this fixed, but we're not quite sure how to do it. Um, Vern put up some numbers, 500, I had the number written down here, but I don't have my reading glasses on now. Um, the uh, about about five hundred bucks a month, a uh, quarter extra, correct? Five hundred per quarter. A year. To pay it off for one year. For one year. For the one year measure. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that so was ridiculous. But that? but no. my point is, if we have all the ratepayers and we put this out for a vote, we will. 
and let them give like three or four, we developed three or four options that would work and let the ratepayers vote themselves and decide if they want to pay extra or less or what have you. Okay. If the district takes on debt, it has to be voted on by 60% of the voters. And you will get the choice. And it's possible to put more articles together that say, do you want to bond it? Do you want to do it all in one year? Or do you want to do none of the above? You will vote. Not us. Well, we will vote. We don't control it. It's always done at an annual meeting by that vote. As long as we get the information out there and get it into the voting we hands. The best we've got. We should be able to draft something fairly soon on that. It's not hard to. So we don't have to wait till next March to vote on this. Yes, not if we hold. Yeah. Well, if, if we hold a separate, no special. You can't hold one at all. No. We've done votes for important things. For things that are special meetings. The law that determines it. Let me explain what you can get from the Superior Court. You have to prove to the Superior Court the following. You have to verify an emergency exists, and you have to demonstrate the severity of the harm to be avoided, <coughs> the urgency of the petitioner's need, whether the claimed emergency was foreseeable or avoidable, whether the appropriate appropriation could have been made at the annual meeting, and whether there are alternative remedies not requiring an appropriation. Those are the requirements for a special meeting. Right. We have children on Willie Street that we need to take care of. The and water is people. safe. The water is safe, so it doesn't meet the emergency requirement. But we could go to Superior Court and say we need a special meeting for this purpose. But if the court turns us down, well, then we're left with March. But we could try. But we could try. try. That, that would be proactive, to try. That's right, and anyone can file that petition. Do you have plans? Do you, is there something preventing you from filing this petition? No, it just came out just now. I, well, with this information, I looked it up this afternoon and printed it out. I would have to consult with counsel to find out, you know, how liberal or flexible are Superior Court judges given those constraints. Some Superior Court judges will say, you say it's an emergency, I say it's an emergency, it's done. Some judges will say, uh-uh, you didn't meet the requirements, denied. So, it's, it's a pig in the boat. What, last year we applied for a rate study to be done by Environmental Finance Center at UNC Chapel Hill. And we were approved because of the size of our district when they did a rate study. Charity, paid for by grants. We didn't have yes. to pay for it. Uh, did the race any determine that we are at a level to continue our fund balance or are we going to deplete it over... I've never seen that study as it relates to Rollinsville. I've never seen that study. I've seen the study that says compare you to other towns, but I haven't seen a study that says Rollinsville needs this and this and none of that. Okay, well could you please ask for the study and then sure. read it and then at the next meeting please have that information available for us. Right. Yes. If you're saying that if you can do a, a Warren article and you can have it be done by the voters, they did that last election and you haven't done the projects and my understanding you don't intend to do the projects that the vote is voted for. Don't what measure would be the intention. difference? Don't measure my intention. I intend to take care of stuff. We do. When? Now, what is your, take that editorial comment out and ask the question again. I asked the question, how will we guarantee that you will do it if it goes to the voters next year? If it goes to the voters, it goes to the voters. We've we have no control beyond that. Why would we start You are choosing not to do some thing? stuff right now that was voted in April. Okay. Our let, me, let me answer part of that. We've got two. That came up in several things, not the least of which was the auditor's report. And at least part of the 50000 that was supposed to go to Willie Street was indeed spent on a raise for the superintendent long before we ever got here. So talk to your commissioners from last year. Furthermore, there was the overspending of $25,000. Which was a grant. 
No, 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 it wasn't. Not a grant. no, it was not. You know the details of this money. You don't need to bring that up. We're not going to get into it because it's been investigated somewhere else. You're right. We're not going to talk about it. So, but we have the money in our account to do the projects that were voted on by the townspeople, right? We have the 300000 or however much money we have in our account to do the projects that were voted on. I I'm asking. No. We don't? No. Okay. Well, I, I've heard you say, I've, I've heard you say, hold on, I've heard you say that you guys have the, the, the pen power to say whether something's being done or not at what time. The voters voted to have two projects done, and we like those projects done because we voted on it, and they haven't been done yet. So are you telling me we're not going to do those projects? No, I didn't say that at all. When are we going to do those projects? Excuse me. There were three projects. Water well, General Don Sullivan well. We haven't received anything from our superintendent. And what he plans to do with the money was there. We were told that the money was directed to. And we didn't hear from him as far as the two projects go. That's not I, true. I've had a request. I, I have a request. It has a breakdown. He's speaking. But it has He's a breakdown. Right. He's got the floor. I have a request to him already to find out more about what's going on in the uh, pump alley. I know more about the technical side and what we're doing and why. And right now I get a list of expenses, but it doesn't tell me what it does. I have no idea what the configuration change is going to be. I asked for a drawing. I was given one sheet. It tells me nothing. Are you are you an operator type person? Do you have the? No, ma'am. I was. I worked in piping, mechanical, and structural for years. I worked 50 years in that field, so I have an idea what I'm talking about. What I'm looking at, I can read drawings, I can read specifications, I can work with that. I've written specifications for water and sewer and the things well, that are being some, done. Some, something even more important. On some reasons, things like that, steam. More important than our clean water. No, no, Absolutely. no. I'm saying I'm talking about systems now. Let's look at. Out of the hand here. Okay. I'm talking about systems. We want to make sure water is very important. But when we're talking about high pressure steam, it can kill people and put the finger into something else. Okay, but that's not what we're dealing with. I, right I know, but I'm telling you this. Water. We're looking for details, okay? We want the details. We're looking for details. Us. That's what we're waiting for. Ray has details. You've had details no, we, sent? I, I'm, talking about 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 the I'm talking about details. We want specifications, we want drawings, we want material specifications. And like you, I said, you, Clem, you, if you want detailed, engineered stamp drawings, then we're going to have to pay for those. Right. We don't have those at this time. So I, if I've asked you to provide me with the technical data. You know what you're going to try to do. I have provided that with you. No, you haven't. You asked to have a walk of the facility, okay. and you've yet to come, and I can walk you through the process. Okay. We had that sketch, that meeting Here's my email I sent you today. I read it already. Read the one I replied. Okay, wait a minute. We've got to move on. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. This is, this is craziness. No, it is. Hurry. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, at the Wright Pierce uh, engineering proposal, I suggested, why can't we fix Willie Street? And Jeff from Wright Pierce said, we can do Willie Street for about, I believe, if Ray could help me, I think it was 120000 and Bob, Bob, right? Mm -hmm. Asked the question, does that include engineering? Curving, hot top, everything. He goes, yes, because it's a straight shot. There's no gas in the way, and it includes all new services. And I says, why don't we do that? At our home, we can only take so much out of our budget to fix it. Willie Street needs to be fixed. Okay, so I agree. I, I, I just just now we're getting multiple numbers for, you know, what do we do with Willie Street? It? Is it 300,000 or is it 120,000? I don't know. I need a firm number. I mean, I'm not going to borrow $300,000 if I only need 120. Well, you can because you can pay it right back. That's right. Not if it's a bond. Yeah, but we're talking about not doing a bond. That's, we need the information before we go to the bank. Okay. The bank's going to ask this question. Burn. Burn. Yes, Dennis. It's on 17. Willie, the Calvin and Willie Street had failed, so we replaced that. And then the water pipe that goes across that is ductile now. It's not, it's not, it's not cast iron. Willie Street is all cast iron. 
as far as no, no, not where the culvert is. They replace the culvert. As you go they across the culvert, it's all duct golf. The they only they thing you have to do is come straight down the hill and meet a boat. Okay, but that's the majority of the road. The majority of the road is cast iron. <coughs> At the bottom, you're right, there's duct golf steel. It's duct all the way across. It's about what? 50 it's feet of duct on a thousand foot run. Right. Which means it's, it's, it's not, even fit. not a significant amount of replacement. We won't have to do the bottom of the hill. That's great. We'll have to do the two sides, though. Mm -hmm. Yes, Carl. I want to correct a statement Commissioner Meegan made about the raise that the superintendent received last year by the previous commission, which happened out of the operating budget, which is the only way it can happen. The general fund can only be accessed through a vote of the voters at an annual meeting of the voters. That was handled through the operating budget, was, which is completely separate and apart from the Warren article that was approved in March for $50,000 for that specified purpose. Well, the former chairman stated when that came up specifically, and it's on tape, you can watch it, he said, well, part of that $50,000 was spent on raised papers. Just to clarify, he's talking about the $50,000 that the prior commissioners had set aside for the trust. Or Lily Street. It was, and it was not spent on that. That slippery piece at the end of the budget? I don't believe there was a slippery piece at all. Well, no, it was gone by the end of the year. That's true. It's all about the board. Yes. Anyway, let me summarize. We're looking for solutions. We're looking for practical solutions. We're looking for things that aren't going to break ratepayers' pockets. And then we'll go from there. But it requires time, it requires research, and we're working on it. I spend hours every day doing phone calls and talking to people and trying to find out what resources are available. We're not sitting idly on our hands, believe me. Yes, Allison? Um, it seemed like the, uh, the ideas that you proposed were one or the other, a bond or a rate increase, and can't, could you do some combination of the two? It didn't seem like that was something that you were yes, proposing. We can do we can do that. I mean, a loan for $8 a quarter sounds workable. That, that's an entirely a rate increase. Loans have to be paid back, so it's all going to be a rate increase. I, I think, in my opinion, I would talk to these guys about the same what's going on as far as budgeting and everything else goes. Besides that rate increase for that, looking at everything that's coming downstream, we're going to start planning for it now. This may mean money put aside early, starting probably in 2020, to go along with these projects and water so we have to take care of. <coughs> Instead of waiting the last minute, like everything is hitting us now. This is crazy. It's stupid. Well, the other thoughts. Okay. Other thoughts. Yeah. I know, we'll never answer all your questions. It's just never going to happen. Just the, go ahead. And, and one of the, um, the other idea, like, is there any way, this is getting kind of creative, if we could, this is getting kind of creative, but is there any way we could get like a certain amount of rate payers to advance pay? Like, let's say we had 100 oh. rate payers that prepaid $2,000, okay, for two years you don't have to pay, or is that is that too crazy, or is that like... It's not crazy, it's just that... <laughs> there was some discussion of letting people prepay property taxes in New Hampshire and they had to have some sort of enabling legislation and that fell through. Well, this is a prepayment of a tax. Yeah. And it's like, no, sorry, yeah. can't do it. Okay. Massachusetts, sure, go ahead, do whatever you want. Yeah. Not up here. Okay. And then that's the last question. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> Every town in the municipality has an emergency budget. Willie Street qualifies for emergency funds to be used because it impacts people's health and water. The water is safe, so how does it impact their health? The water is safe in the short term. Long-term yes. exposure to elevated iron levels will lead to health damage. So we, we are we paying to have problem. their water I'm tested more frequently? Oh, well, we don't have emergency problems. If we did, we'd go to the Superior Court and say, let us use them, but we don't have them. Municipal budgeting is you ask the voters for just what you need and no more. But you have 300000 in the bank, why can't you take all that, the points? 
that is for a different type of emergency. That is if the ratepayers don't pay. Really? Not all. That's not all. It's water money. We're an enterprise operation. We're not. I, well, so yeah. a, a question about that. Um, I thought that the, the uh, annual budgeting was intended to put some funds aside, and in fact, DES is encouraging putting funds aside to deal with the capital infrastructure. The, the things that must be done, because we're approaching the extended life of all of this pipe, the distribution system. So I, I, I'm not sure that I agree with what you're saying, because I've heard other other suggestions, including you know, looking at how the town does its budgeting, and and okay, what, 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 how our other municipality that we're part of, the town of Rollinsburg, and the funds that get set aside in fund balances are sometimes drawn upon, are often drawn upon for capital projects. So I'm a little confused about your definition of what you can use that fund balance for. I, I just, I'm not sure I, I understand why the district cannot tap, tap that for the, this capital money. money. It's not all water money. It's sewer money, money too, money. yes. Understood. And water money has to be used for water projects and sewer money for sewer projects. Understood. So you can't take the whole 300000 and put it in a water project. I, I'm not suggesting that, but using some of that for this project seems like a reasonable use of a fund balance because that's what the money is there for, for that kind of need. A number of years ago, some of you remember this, we had a very large landlord in town who just decided to stop paying their water and sewer bill. Lived near me. <coughs> we were allowed to tap into that money because the income side, the rates, were not being paid. But that's what it was for. So is there a breakdown between what the water and the sewer have in each of that account that's 300,000 ish? Um, most recent discussion was it was mostly sewer. Do, is there a, a budget, a, a paper somewhere that that has a breakdown of what that is? It's pretty much verbal. Nobody, we went back quite a number of years, in fact several decades to find out where it went and we can't find a contribution from each side. Do you know? So how are you, how does that break out then? So you're saying most of it's sewer and not at water, but if something happens, that, that doesn't make sense. So at some point, are we going to take that 300000 and just split it down the middle and say water, sewer? Probably. At some point, yes. When? That was suggested to me this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Not by anybody here. No, no, I'm saying it, it doesn't make sense that you don't have a, you know, in, in any budget you would need to know where your money is coming from or going to, so... Well, this, is, this has been part of the delay we've had in approving the 50000 that Ray wants to do with the pump gallery. We were trying to find out where that money's coming from, the way it would be, ought to be done, and we talked to the auditor to find out, can he break this thing down? He's had two weeks, he called me today, and he said, no. So, we can't break it down. Do we he need says, a vote? Oh, excuse me. He said he used to have a water and a sewer a few years ago, when that happened exactly, I can't, I can't tell you. They eliminated one. They melded the money together and confuses the issue. And I talked to Vernon today about that by email, telling him we should separate water and sewer. So who makes that water. decision? Does it is it a town we're going to decision? The, no, we're doing that. We're going to call the we we get say, okay. it. The commissioners do that. So well, do you need to talk to us? We to. have sewer commissioners too, or no, it's all the same job. No, it's it's okay, so you're water and sewer commissioners. This is part of a lot of the research that I do. Okay, we're going to split that. It's called a savings account, by the way. How do we split it in the water and sewer? So that there's discrete accounts. Well, I'm going to call DRA, Dr. Michelle Clark, come around and find out what's the procedure. And then separate the two accounts, either on paper or two separate accounts. In accounting function. Right. Well, I, I've run a lot of different things and had one account, but then have breakdowns of how you do it. Two separate accounts, the best way. Clears the mud all together. You make your deposits each year, you know where it's going. Yeah. And at the end of time, when you want to draw money out, you know exactly what you get to play with. As long as it doesn't cost you for the accounts. One big account is not a bad thing as long as you're keeping your own Yeah, but the project is trying to decide who owns what. Like, what happened years ago, we can't tell you. That's the problem. 
the state RSA says you can keep water money with water, so money with sewer. You can't spend one on the other. You guys are in charge of both, so it it, it, it makes sense in a sense that it's one account. You still can't get the money. That's the problem. It, it's an accounting function. If there's three hundred ten thousand dollars in there, we determine that one hundred fifty-five thousand is water, and the balance is sewer. That's just a bookkeeping thing. That makes sense. Yeah. You know. Well, it, it counts to the people that are waiting for work to be done, or for us to we have to an be option. able. We gave you one. Right, but for us to be able to say, okay, we have 150 in there, 100 needs to stay, 50 can be spent towards a project that needs to be done. Right? That's what Maybe. that's what we're trying to get to. Maybe. That's where we're trying to get to, yes, is so that we know what's in the account. Yes. How many people here can go for a one-year project? For how many people? One year project. That's, that's $111 a quarter. To get it done? So that we protect our town, our get it done? Less expensive than health problems. I'll give out my coffee. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay. So currently we don't have any applicants that are active. We know. have one person that's put in resume. He's no, actually two. Two. Okay. And they are they're awaiting on a couple of those. And we hear there's going to be at least two more. Okay. Do we have, is there a timeline that you're thinking that you may be able to fill that position? I would like to do it tomorrow, but apparently the job market is rather tight. Okay. Uh, we discussed the pending POs, so we can move past that. Uh, the pending mem memorandums that I've sent, there's quite a few that I've sent out without any response. I want to A, make sure that you're receiving them. Um, Give us an example. Um, I just sent one out on August 7th uh, discussing the John Jackman uh, evaluation of the um, priority list. We had a discussion at the last meeting and you said that he didn't actually say that he felt comfortable with me doing that project for 50000 So I reached out to him and I just I put it in a memorandum. He actually signed it and put some comments at the end identifying that he truly did state that he felt comfortable saying that I could do it within the 50000 He does put a note here that he'd like to see a 10% buffer, but he does feel that I can do it for the $50,000 based on his review. So I just I want to make sure. I'm not sure what we're supposed to do. Are we supposed to go okay. back and say, we got your memo? Well, some kind of response. I mean, okay. Okay. We, we will do that. We will use a, we will respond, um, even if it's, thank you for your input. Yeah. Sometimes that's, that's all we can do. Are you talking about the pump, what repair, is that the pump galley? The pump galley at the oh, wastewater okay. treatment facility. Um, that's an important one event around the farm. Why do you let Ray have the floor until well, he's done? Just getting some clarity on what we're talking about. Why don't we let Ray have the floor until he's done? And then he can relinquish it to you. Yeah, so if I'm, if, I'm sorry if it wasn't clear. So John Jackman's the one that did the, the evaluation of um, the priority list. And part of that evaluation was to not only did he identify that the pump galley was the highest priority, but he also identified that the budget that was put in place after doing research and looking at the equipment that was being installed, looking at the plans that I gave him, he does agree that it can be done for the $50,000. Thank you. Plans? The same plans I gave you. Can you give me one sheet? That's what I gave him. He's got the same information. He tells you nothing. Wait, wait, Clem? Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's the engineer that was evaluating. And I gave him the same documents that I gave you, and he's he's stating that he feels comfortable with the installation. I know, John. Okay. All right, but next. Um, the RAS flow meter in the basement. So we are obviously at um, a sticky point because we had one of the control panels fail. Right? So we're, we're using uh, the only control panel that we currently have, uh, and we've spent another $1,500 for a Band-Aid down there at this point, and we have no redundancy. So if this panel fails, we're, we're going to be out of, uh, we're going to literally be out of control you know, for our pumps when it comes to flow on our RAS and our WES. Um, these are you know, very important topics when it comes to operating the wastewater treatment facility. Um, so. I know there's, there's a lot of conversation going around about when and how we're going to do the pump galley. Ultimately, doing the pump galley all at once would be the best case scenario. Um, I did discuss with Rich Lavalette that you know, if, if the repair is in the near future, or the, the full upgrade to the basement, that he's comfortable with uh, the repair he did for a short amount of time, but it's not a permanent fix. Okay? Uh, his quote that he gave us to install the um, the mag meter is, uh, you know, thirty actually thirty-seven hundred dollars, which is more than his quote to completely uh, upgrade and rewire the whole pump galley as one unit. So I just want to point that out. If we start piecemealing the repairs in the basement, it's going to cost more. Okay, because he's even if we do this one part of the project, he's going to have to come back to do the wiring. Uh, control configuration for the pumps. Okay, it, it, 3700 is done and done and it's functioning and the problem No, no, 3700 is to replace the, the flow meter that failed. Right. Right? And then it's done. Then that one is, right. Then it works. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, and then in terms of the, the pump galley, yeah, I just I attached to this um, the, this card again that has the breakdown for the pump galley. 
And I understand, Clem, what you're saying about the drawings not having the full engineering detailed specs like you'd like, but that's not that's not where we're at with the project. So what we did is we had the CAD drawings done. We went over the layouts and the measurements to make sure the equipment fit. But in terms of going further with that, if you want to to get a price from right here is to put an engine, a stamped engineering set of drawings what together. Want. What I want is the information on the pump versus the old one. Yeah. I, want, I want the schematics for it. I want to be able to put this down on, on the, uh, electronically. So future commissioners come in Absolutely. and you can have the information there to work with. Yeah. Right now we get nothing. We have no idea what we're getting. I, we have no sure details. Or I send you the specs on the new pump and we have... I don't have the specs on the new pumps. I don't think I received the specs on, on the full medium when we talked about it. Uh, you sent me the information on the, uh, the, the contact and then the other one that's... Okay, just recently, one of the failures. Yeah, the, the specs that I just sent you. That's the only thing I know of at this point in time. I haven't seen the specs or anything else. All right, well, I, I apologize if you didn't get the specs to the, the, the pumps that we're you know, talking about installing. I was under the impression you had them. I'll get, no, I can I get those to you immediately. That's why I sent out my email. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of, uh, the, you know, the full layout and breakdown, I don't have engineering notes. I don't have a stamp. There's not going to be a signature. Because Tolerances, fasteners, well, we can, material, we can go through, types of flanges. Yeah, we can definitely go through a material list. That's fine. But just understand the point we were at. Was, yes, I understand, but you could put a purchase order for this material I, anyway. I understand So that. you can provide it up front now so we know what we're looking at beforehand. Yeah. And then I like to do a walkthrough with it to see exactly what's happening. I, I would love to That's do all that. I do. What I would ask is, can we have some site, some sort of commitment to the project? Before? It's going to take me an extended amount of time to put a full parts list together down there. And if it's for not, then I just is You're there asking a us to make a commitment on something? You haven't you haven't shown what the hell we're committing to. I disagree, That's the Bob. I, there's been multiple engineers that agree that the project can be completed within the budget. I am definitely willing to give, you know, more detail on it if that's what's being requested. But I would like a, some sort of commitment stating if I can throw, put the detail together and it fits within the budget that we're moving forward on. I don't think that's... I know the pumps are going to be replaced. Yeah. Some of the original equipment was down here. Two are anyway. One's been replaced. The dual muzzle along at the same time. I agree with that. But the rest of it I don't understand. That's why you want to do a walkthrough with you to see what's I, going on. I want you to come do a walkthrough. I want like to look at the material first and get down and it gives me something to talk to. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, it's going to take time to put a full list of material that I don't have that in hand right this moment. I will go through and get it. All I'm looking for is some commitment that when I provide all this stuff, that we're going to move forward on. Is that is that something we can I guess you the other commissioners, but I'd like to see the stuff first. Let me ask you a couple of questions on this side. When you're done. Go ahead. Okay. Safety gate. Did that finally have a commitment? It's here. Yeah. It's here. When did it finally finish up? The record's at the plant. We've okay. got a safety log book there. When did you did you do training with the people yet? We on? did. Yeah. And the clarifier. Is that all done now? In terms of what? You were going to repair that four months ago. The clarifier's been repaired. The repair log. The Where's cement it? is all done on that? No. You're talking oh, about the contact, contact chamber. The contact chamber. Contact chamber. Contact chamber. The contact chamber, no. The contact chamber is not on a high priority list right now of things that we're dealing with. What about the um, report on portal well benefit? I sent it out today. I got a nasty grim back from Vern. He's not happy with the amount of time it took me to get it to him. Oh, it was due two months ago. Oh, well, you've got it. Well, I mean... Sure. Well, it was due July 19th. Here, here's, here's my concern with that. Told us it was going to cost a thousand bucks. Okay, when we called the company, turns out the thousand bucks was just for the de just for the engineering that the actual work to do was going to cost us six. Oh, correct. But that's what we talked about originally was getting a price to have an engineered recommendation on the repair over there. You know, and I think to go further into that conversation, the thing that didn't miss is that the need for the the ventilation system there now is a moot point. The, the chemicals are no longer off-gassing. The way we're injecting chemicals, there is no off-gassing happening. I'm all in favor of doing an upgrade to the, the HVAC system there, but we've got other major system errors that we've got to, you know, fix to be in compliance with certain things. 
we have two contracts here. We could sign one and only two. Okay. 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 Right. Right. Just, just so we're clear, though, that the HVAC topic, you know, is not a pressing point. The, the situation that caused the the corrosion in that area, the environment that was there, was based on the old measures that were being used for implementing the chemicals, which is no longer. So those chemicals are no longer off-gassing, just so we're clear. So the money that we're going to spend in there to do a, to do investigation to, in, you know, put this HVAC system in could be used in other places. If you can guarantee on your sainted grandmother's head that no more corrosion will occur because of the way it's set up. I can guarantee you that based on the off-gassing of the chemicals, yes. No. I said, can you guarantee that there will be no more corrosion? I can't guarantee that. Okay, then we do need to at least investigate the demolition. So it's more money that we're going to spend, though. But that just guarantees us that something is either it's not necessary or it has to be done. Well, Wright Pierce did, a, did the asset management study. I mean, they could give a recommendation if you want to ask them that question at probably no cost because they've got the time invested already. And they're very familiar with the system. In the April, March report, they said you've got to address ventilation because of the extensive corrosion at Porter Wells. That's what I've got for information. Would you, if you can, so there's been upgrades done to Porter Wells since. So if that, that conversation could, you know, come across a little differently, and I, you know, I would ask you to talk to Wright Pierce about that. Okay, if in phase one of their proposed thing, complete a site vote, visit and develop an HVAC improvement recommendations memo for the Porter Well facility, that's 1500 bucks. Right. That would give us the information about whether or not the corrosion is under control? It would, but I don't even think we have to go that far is what I'm saying. They have the information. That would be to give a recommendation on a system to go with, but not an engineered set of drawers. Okay, tell Let's you what. That. Email Chris Bird, ask him that question, see if it's going to cost any money, and make sure you CC the commissioners. Yeah, of course I will. And that he CCs back. Yeah, he will. Okay, fine. Next. Um, we talked about the Allen chemical feed pump. So, we brought, yeah. correct. Okay, you, that was approved. approved that. Go buy it. Okay. All right. Um, the deferred maintenance in the in the basement. So obviously that's another memorandum I set out saying if we're not moving forward on the basement, the pump alley, that we need to strongly consider putting some rebuilt parts into the pumps that exist. That's the one that you said, you know, we're not in no way we're gonna do that, but that was a memo that was sent out. As we have had an extensive discussion about give us more specifics about the complete replace and then we will talk. Okay. Um, chemical feed addition at the wastewater treatment facility was the second highest priority on the priority list agreed with by oil team. We've had chemical feed failures at the wastewater treatment facility which have resulted in violations of E. coli. So You're this talking is, sodium bisulfate? No, I'm talking about, uh, yeah, sodium bisulfate but also the chlorine pumps. So there's, there's the goal is to move to the new location for the chemical addition and then put the, the proper equipment in place and uh, help guarantee that the dose is, is meeting the standards that we need. Get us a price. You have a price already. That was already designed and, and presented in the priority list. I'd have to put that in the Okay. Yeah. I don't have a word in Okay. I've some discussion on that. So basically the Did chemical the buildings outside? Yes. Was the going underground or something? To the buildings outside that get us away from going underground okay. to implement the, the chemicals. They, the buildings were built specific to the location that the chemicals are being introduced. So it's very short, you know, runs to introduce the chemical. It helps with potential freezing, breaks, all that. So. Um, okay. We invested in the buildings, but we need to move to the second phase, which is to actually outfit them. So we'll do the clearing afterwards. It's, it's going to be valuable um, real estate. You know, we need a proper bathroom. Uh, it could be a locker room. There's a lot of things that could turn into, but that's, you know, it's going to be real estate that we can use for something else. 
I completely understand that and I respect that. I just looking at the purchase order and policy, it clearly states that consumables do not have to meet the hundred dollar limit. So, but you're overriding that right now, is what you're telling me. Anything over $100. Could you update the document and resend it just so we all have that? Please. It's a matter of public record. It will be in the minutes that we have decided that when a unit value or a unit group is more than $100, we need a purchase order. Even though it's theoretically a consumable and otherwise exempt in, in the past, is now needs a purchase order. Where is that document um, located? If anybody wanted to come and see it, do they just email you guys to request it? or you, It should be in your files. I have my own copy, but I know that... It should be in the file wars. Okay, I didn't know. It should be. Probably. Well, don't look at me. I'm not the one that prints things out. And see, the recommendation from the auditor that says... Let's see. Purchase orders should be prepared for all goods, supplies, and or equipment purchased in excess of $100. This would include all credit card purchases in excess of $100. Oh, I've read it. Okay. Last year it said $500. Yeah, well, he uh, tightened up. This is what we're going by. That's what we're waiting for. So this... He probably said $500 before and he said, this is getting abused. We're going to go down to $100. That was his impression. They, you know, he wrote them. I've had a lot of conversations with Tom Dumais, so I, 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 and I can reference some of them. But anyway, I don't think Tom Dumais agreed that it was being abused. But that's fine. That's speculation. Um, that's all I have on the on that end of it. Um, so these all emails that you sent them, you all received back. And correct. Back. Interesting. Uh, I've got an annual review coming up. Personnel can't talk about it. Okay, but RSA 91A, if, if it is personnel, I request to have that be public. I have that right. So, mm -hmm. I, I'm just, this is what I want to discuss. It can be public. What you are referring to is when people are demoted, fired, or terminated. That's the only time that can be done. I disagree. We can look at that and... Okay, we'll ask, our, we'll ask for legal advice. But we've already actually gotten an advice on that particular line item. Okay. It only applies to that clause. Quick question. Are we allowed to seek legal advice from those city sure, lawyers? Sure, no, oh, not, from, not from the district's council. So only you guys can be racking up that right. bill? Okay. So we have, to rack it. we have to go pay for our own lawyers if yes. we have questions? Interesting. Okay. What else you got? I got the Silver Street um, development. Uh, discussion that I'd like to have publicly here because it was what? Silver Street Silver Development. Development. They want to extend water lines. That's the only extension. Not even the Silver Street. Oh, oh, Victory Point. The one at the end of Silver Street. Yeah, what about it? <laughs> so I, I shared with you folks that I met with the, with with uh, with Caroline at the town, but for the pre-construction meeting representing us and I want to publicly say I apologize if I if, if I didn't go through the proper chain of command on that okay uh, in the future I've asked Caroline to just communicate directly with you for any of these types of uh, requests and then you can contact me if you'd like me to be a part of that meeting right. but Thank I you. just want to clarify yeah. the statements I made were just recommendations on the sewer line extension and it was very clear that the commissioners had the final say on that. Right. So I want to clarify that. The second thing is the the, the point that I made regarding uh, the pressure and flow test. That's not a recommendation. That's standard procedure that the state requires before they tie into our system. So there'll have to be a pressure test and a flow test to show that there's adequate water pressure and adequate volume there for fire protection. Um, I recommended Wright Pierce do that study for us. I think they came back at about 1,500. It was a rough estimate. I'm asking him for an official document, and I'll get that to you once I get it. Yes, yeah, so we want written that proposals. And the proposal will be paid by the contractor. That gets paid by the contractor, but the structure is going to be that we're going to hire right here so they work for us to have our best interest okay. in place, and then we're going to build the contractor. Like all developers, like the town does what engineering stuff, and the town fronts the money, and then when it's done, or it's up front at first, and then it's completed, they're going to pay. And 
the they are. It's not, our, it's not our financial responsibility to show that we have the capability to then look up. No. Right. Second part of that is we find that the flow is inadequate or the volume or the pressure is inadequate, then the next recommendation would be booster pump at some, at some um, point. But again, that would be at their expense if they want to proceed because if they want to extend and we don't have the pressure, then we'd have to position them to, to put the booster pump system. That's correct. Now, how is that going to affect particularly the sewage? There's no sewer. There's no sewer out there. It's a lot. It's about three thousand feet to get to our sewer okay. connection at the bottom of Foundry. So it'd be just the water. That and would be if that breaks, that would still be on this. We would own the system out there. Correct. We would have to fix that. We would own the system out there. It would be our. It would be the district's. Water. Right. That could be that could be very expensive. Well, they pay for the expansion. Uh, yeah. We then own it. It's just like the roads. Yeah, we own it. We the roads. Yeah. So we accept them. They're the town's roads. Yeah. We'll be able to spend what we want. Anything else? No, that's all I got. Uh, no, sorry, I got one more. Um, there was some confusion regarding the, the 10K uh, water bond uh, for Porter Well. Yes. And I wanted to clarify that. I know there were some emails that went around. That got shifted last year, and I take responsibility for that because it. The, the way that Warren Arco, not Warren Arco, excuse me, the bond's written, it says Foundry Street Pump Station. So when we're going through the budgetary process, they said Foundry Street Pump Station obviously is our lift station that shouldn't be on the water side. So they, with my recommendation, moved it. It was an honest mistake. Looking into it deeper, obviously Porter Wells on Foundry Street as well. So it was identified as the Foundry Street Pump Station because they're talking about Porter Wells. We'll fix it. Anything else? That's all I know. Is that it? Well, we're, our next meeting is going to be the 28th, which unfortunately you will not be able to attend. I understand you'll be in Connecticut. So it'll be just Clem and I. Very intimate. It'll be here August 28th, 6.30. Any questions about that? A call for a vote to adjourn. We're adjourned. Thank you.